This is the best Fujifilm camera ever made. What's going on YouTube? Welcome back man to yet another King Jibes episode. Now today we're going to be talking about what I feel like is the best Fujifilm camera ever made. But when it comes down to a camera that not only has pro features, an amazing shooting experience, and also doesn't have all of the unnecessary bells and whistles, this camera right here is a pure photographic masterpiece. So as you guys can see man, this is the Fujifilm X-Pro2. Now you might be wondering like, wait, wait, wait a second. This camera is old, man. It came out in like 2014, 2015. I'm not sure the exact date, but you're right, man. This camera is for sure on the older side. Uh, since then, you've had cameras like the X100V, X-T5, newer X-Pro3, but you guys, this is a pure stills photography camera. You can use this for street photography, portrait photography, professional shoots, casual shoots, take it on vacation. I mean, the possibilities of this camera are endless, and I'm gonna be giving you guys my reasons why today. Starting with the first one here folks dual card slots in the x pro 2 this camera takes two sd cards and the significance of that is you have protection uh, to be able to shoot things professionally and even though none of my cards have ever failed having that extra security of being able to back up your files onto a second card just gives you peace of mind while you're out making photographs you don't have to worry about an sd card possibly corrupting and not being able to get your photos to your clients. The camera has 24.2 megapixels, which is far more than enough. I feel like that is the sweet spot for making sure the file isn't too large, but also not too low res like 16 megapixels in the X-Pro1. 24 megapixels is the sweet spot right here. This camera also takes all of the different Fuji lenses and that includes all of the third-party lenses from companies like Seven Artisans as well as TT Artisans. I mean, there's a ton of third-party lenses that you can put onto this camera and just get endless results. Uh, the two that I have is the 23mm F2 and I also have the 18mm F2 which is this little guy right here, amazing little lens. This is a 28 millimeter equivalent. Both of these are fantastic for street photography. Now, before we get into the good stuff and talk about the camera styling and the shooting experience, I wanna give a huge thank you and shout out to our sponsor for this episode, Surfshark VPN. Surfshark VPN is an app and browser extension that masks everything that you do online to keep you and your most valuable information safe. Now, if you're like me and you like to go to cafes a lot and you need to use their Wi-Fi, Surfshark VPN allows you to safely connect to any public network by encrypting your personal online data. And in a world of phishing scams and security breaches, Surfshark VPN allows you to peruse the internet with confidence without having to worry by providing real-time breach alerts on your email, websites, and even identity theft. You can also virtually travel the world with just one click by changing your IP address, giving you access to exclusive content found only in other countries. Stream movies, TV shows that you wouldn't find in your regions by simply changing your IP address through Surfshark VPN. And if you're someone who does anything online, Surfshark VPN is a no-brainer to keeping you and your most valuable information safe. Get Surfshark VPN today by clicking the link in the description below and also entering promo code KINGJAPES for 83% off and three months free. Huge thank you to Surfshark VPN for sponsoring today's episode, but let's jump back into the Fujifilm X-Pro2. Uh, the X-Pro2 as well is also a rangefinder styled camera. So you have this optical viewfinder that you can actually look and see through, very reminiscent of a rangefinder like a Leica, uh, but you also have the option to make it a hybrid, which is gonna show you frame lines just like it would in a rangefinder camera, as well as all of the other information inside of the viewfinder, or you can just use it purely as an electric viewfinder, which is great as well. Without getting into too many of the technical details, guys, look at the beauty of this camera. The shutter speed dial up for you also have the exposure compensation shutter right here on off switch front wheel Fuji cameras obviously have that aperture on the lens which is gonna add to that tactile feeling and the X Pro 2 you guys is a very good feeling camera in the hand I mean I, I do somewhat have larger hands so if you have smaller hands it might not be that great I mean on the back side it has all of the different dials and you need you have autofocus lock auto exposure lock uh, you even have a toggle wheel right here uh, the screen is not a touch screen because it's from 2014. This camera just did not support touchscreen at that time. But the screen itself though is actually extremely good quality. It's very usable if you wanna just hold this thing out like a point and shoot or if you wanted to bring it to your eye. The EVF has a very, very nice 
resolution. I think the benefit of shooting with a rangefinder styled uh, digital camera like the X-Pro2 is not only the aesthetics and styling, but also the different shooting experience it provides. I feel like with the X-T3, X-T4, X-T5, the X-T series cameras, uh, it feels more like a traditional SLR. And that's not a bad thing per se, but this camera is very popular among street photographers. And you know it is because even now that it is, what, seven or eight years later, these cameras are still fetching between 800 and a thousand dollars used and so it just goes to show that over time even though the camera is aging it's still such a high quality piece of gear for the money and a lot of people are appreciating that just how the market is around the cameras now you do get an older sensor and you don't also get any of the newer film simulations that you would get with the x pro 3 but the ones that are included in here honestly are more than enough and if you're like me and you like to play around with different film recipes uh, i actually make a ton of different videos on film recipes for the x pro 2 that you guys can use to achieve different film looks like for example i have one for portrait 400 that i think looks amazing now technically there are far better Better cameras out there. I think the X100V itself is a really, really good camera with the exception that, you know, you can't change the lens out on it. You also have like the X-T5, which is a great camera as well, but you know, obviously new that's going to cost you anywhere between $1,600 to $2,000. But the X-Pro2 was the defining factor for why Fujifilm rangefinder style cameras are doing so well. I feel like the X100 series wouldn't have taken off without the X-Pro2 because with the initial like X100 and X100S, autofocus was really slow. It wasn't until the X-Pro2 where you had fast enough autofocus, uh, a ton of different features. 24 megapixels, dual card slots, pretty much everything that you would need in a camera. And there's gonna be a lot of people out there who are gonna be upgrading in the next year or so. So right now, this could be a really good time to look out for those deals on the X-Pro2. I picked mine up actually, actually I got it from a trade, but uh, you can get them anywhere between $400 to $800 used if you look and kind of just scope around on the field. Now you guys might be wondering like, what about the Fuji X-Pro1? And the X-Pro1 to me was, a solid camera but it just didn't cut it for me with the single card slot as well as the 16 megapixels I think the X-Pro2 was the perfect middle ground and along with the X-T2 the X-Pro2 was one of the first Fujifilm cameras that I feel like people were able to use professionally so if you guys want to check it out man definitely take a look at the Fujifilm X-Pro2 again these are all just my opinions this is what I believe is the best Fujifilm camera I've tried tons of tons in the past but I don't know there's something magical about shooting with this camera and just seeing the images that it produces absolutely love it so that's gonna wrap it up for me in this episode i hope you all enjoyed it let me know in the comment section down below which fujifilm camera do you think is the best camera that fujifilm has ever made and don't forget to drop a like and subscribe i'll see you guys in the next one as always minolta game